if you're looking for a PPC strategy that can get your Amazon business going again, then you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to share four strategies that you can use to greatly improve the performance of your Amazon PPC. And 90% of the sellers that I've spoken to aren't using these strategies yet, so you know they're advanced. Strategy number one is selecting the right products to advertise. Most sellers will have one to five star products that drive most of their business, and then the rest of their catalog won't really be contributing that much to revenue or the bottom line. Most sellers will try to remedy this by investing more into PPC on these products or getting new listing content made or buying fake reviews or doing any number of things to try to get their worst performing product to perform like their best performing product. But I'm here to tell you that this almost never works. Because in every business, some products will do well and some products won't do well. Like take McDonald's, for example. McDonald's star Asin is the Big Mac, right? If they try to get their Caesar salad or their filet fish to perform at the same level of volume as the Big Mac, it just won't work out because people don't want these two other products as much as they want the Big Mac. So instead of Amazon diverting their budget to promoting their filet fish they should just take that money, improve their Big Mac even more, launch new variations of the Big Mac, spend more ads on the Big Mac and try to get as much money as possible from that Big Mac, right? You can't turn your losing products into your winning products. And any dollar that you spend on your losing product is a dollar you could have potentially spent on your winning product and gotten a much higher ROI on. All right, so what makes a good product? I usually look at five things when I'm assessing a product. Profit, revenue, tackles, stage, and competition. And I'm gonna make them down for you one by one so you can analyze your own catalog and pick out the best performing products. All right, so the first thing we look at is profit. Profit can be broken down into two things, total net profit and net profit margin. For total net profit, I'm just looking for an ASIN that's already contributing significantly to my bottom line. The reason I look at it is because I want an ASIN where if I'm able to increase profit by 20%, my total business will also grow significantly. The second thing I look at is net margin. The reason I look at this is because when you scale a product up, your margin starts to decrease on it. So if you're not careful with this, you could end up canceling out all of your profit on a product. And that's the reason I like to focus on products with at least 10 to 15% or higher net margin. So that when I scale up, I still have enough room to profit on this new revenue that I'm adding. Otherwise, there's no point in scaling up. All right, so the second thing that I look at is revenue. So for revenue, I'm basically just looking at ASINs that are contributing a significant amount to the account's revenue. So if I have an ASIN that's only contributing 1% to the entire account's revenue, and I'm able to grow at 50%, I'm still not going to see that big of a difference on an account level. Whereas if I have an ASIN that's contributing 30% of my account sales and I'm able to grow it by only 15%, I'll see a pretty sizable 4.5% increase on my total revenue. So you always want to focus on ASINs that are contributing significantly to your business so that any small change that you're able to make to their revenue will reflect on your business overall. The third thing I look at is tackles. So for tackles, I'm basically looking at ASINs that have an average or a below average tackles when compared to the rest of their products in the business. The reason I look at this is that products with a very high tackles don't have room to scale, either because if you grow that product, you're going to cancel out all of your profits or there just isn't that much room left to grow it. So you want something that's at an average or below average tackles, because that generally means that you can still grow this product by a decent amount. Okay, so the fourth thing I look at is stage. So for stage, I'm basically assessing how far this product is in its product life cycle. The reason I look at this is because you can't treat a product that was just launched last week the same way you treat a product that's been up for three years. So if something's brand new and it's not taking all of these boxes that we mentioned earlier, that's usually fine. But if something's been up for two years and it's not performing well, then you should probably start to cut back on advertising for that product. So you always have to look at stage when considering what to do with a product. The last thing I look at is competition. So for competition, I tend to look at two things. The first thing is the size of the actual competitors. So if you have competitors that are significantly bigger than you, that usually means that there's enough room to grow. Whereas if your biggest competitor is only doing three or 4% more revenue than you are, then that means no matter what you do, it's gonna be difficult to grow your product much more than where it currently is. And based on that, I have to lower my expectations when it comes to growing this product or when it comes to producing revenue. Because I can say, for example, that Oreo is doing like $5 million a month worth of revenue. So my biscuit company can also do $5 million a month worth of revenue. So you have to adjust your sales targets based on this. And then you have to adjust where you're going to invest your budget based on this. Because if you're going up against huge brands and you don't have any type of price advantage or USP, 
usually it's not going to work out that well for you. So you have to take a hard look at your products, figure out if you're actually offering anything special. Then you have to go back, set realistic sales targets and add a realistic budget and then just hope for the best. The next thing you want to look at after selecting the parent ASINs that you want to focus on, you want to start looking at variations. So usually with variations, I start by advertising all of them. And then based on the results, I'll start to narrow it down to the variations that perform best. I usually narrow it down based on click-through rate and an unit session percentage. The reason I do it this way is because it's optimized to how Amazon's funnel works. So if you have a high click-through rate, you're going to get a lot of clicks. Then if your conversion rate is good, you're going to convert more of these clicks into orders. So you should only focus on advertising the variations that get you the most traffic by having a high click-through rate, and then convert most of that traffic into sales by having a high conversion rate. Anything other than that, you're going to be losing money on. The second strategy I'm going to talk about is campaign structure. Campaign structure is one of these things that a lot of sellers ignore, but it's actually a lot more important than you think. The reason campaign structure is important is because bad structure can negatively affect how you assign budgets, placement boosts, and track your campaigns. The reason this happens is, for example, if you have one campaign with 10 ad groups and each ad group has 50 keywords in it, then you create that campaign with a $50 a day budget. There is no way you could decide how the budget is distributed between this many targets and this many ad groups. So you end up just leaving it up to Amazon and Amazon could invest your money into keywords and targets or ad groups that are not really performing that well, but are bringing in some sales at a very high ACoS. So you end up wasting a lot of money and not getting the performance that you're hoping for. And with placements, you can only set them on a campaign level. So if you set a 50% top of search boost on a campaign, that would affect all of these ad groups and all of the targets within these ad groups equally. So you could end up boosting a lot of targets that weren't really performing well on top of search and wasting a lot of money by doing that. And even tracking becomes difficult because if you have everything in one campaign, so you have multiple products in a single campaign and you have multiple match types and you have a lot of different ad groups and you're targeting your brand keywords and your non-brand keywords and everything in one campaign, it's impossible to track how everything's performing. If you have good structure, and you have each product in its own separate campaign, each match type in its own separate campaign, you can easily search this stuff up on Campaign Manager and see how anything's doing very, very quickly. Now that we know how bad campaign structure affects your account, how do we actually set up a good campaign? Okay, so good campaign structure starts with a good campaign name. A good campaign needs to include the ASIN or the product identifier that you're using, the ad type, the targeting type, and the match type, and any strategy that you're using in that campaign's name. So you can easily find it and track it in the future. After you decide on a good campaign name, you have to think of what's inside of it. So for these campaigns, you usually want to have one ad group at most, and you want to have one product plus its variations if you want to add variations. Within that ad group, you want to have only one match type, and you also want to focus on only either generic or branded keywords. You can't mix the two of them because it makes tracking very difficult. Some people will tell you to limit the number of keywords within each campaign, and I generally agree. I don't think there's a hard set rule to five keywords or 10 keywords like other people will tell you, but I do think it's generally better to be more granular and not have hundreds of keywords in your campaign. There are, of course, some exceptions to this, like what we call a hero campaign here at AI Hello, which is a campaign that only contains one keyword, and that keyword is usually a very high performing keyword for your account that you want to focus on and assign a specific budget to. In other cases, I'll usually add 10 keywords, 20 keywords, or 30 keywords, and that's usually enough to keep the campaign going and not really affect my structure or performance. The third thing I like to implement are organic ranking campaigns. The way you implement this is you start by picking the keywords that you want to rank for, and these are usually keywords where you're already partly ranked, so you're ranked top 10, top 15, or top 20, or you go for keywords or you're already doing very well with ads, but you're not ranked yet. Once you have all of this set up, you need to figure out how to track it. What I do is I set up an Excel sheet where I add a column for the keywords I'm trying to rank for, and then a column for every week since I started creating these campaigns. So every week I'll go in and I'll add my organic rank for that week at the very end of the week, and I'll see over time if my rank is improving on this keyword at a level that can justify my ad spend. If it's improving, good, keep investing money or even invest more money. If it's not improving after four weeks, cut these campaigns off and just focus on the keywords where you're seeing measurable improvements. So for the fourth strategy, what I do is I use the search query performance support to find keywords where I should be investing more money. The way I do this is I track my impression share, my click share, and my conversion share. And ideally what I'm looking for is a keyword where my share of conversions is higher than my share of clicks. My share of clicks is higher than my share of impressions. What this means is that on average, my click through rate and my conversion rate are better than the other people in this market. So the money that I'm spending on ads 
for this keyword is going to bring me a higher ROI than the other people. And I'm also more likely to rank organically for this keyword, which is a double win and why I'm most likely going to invest more money into this keyword. All right, so that's it for the four strategies. I hope you found this video useful. If you need help with your Amazon ads, please reach out at www.aihello.com. We offer software, we offer managed services and everything else that you need to improve your Amazon PPC. Book a call with us and I'll either show up myself or someone from my team will take the call with you and explain how we can help you with your Amazon ads. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys again next week. Have a great day.